Today is the 1st of October, it feels like autumn is here and we have got the stove lit for all of those cozy vibes. <laughs> Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a brand new vlog. Today is the 1st of October and I, I actually can't believe it. I know that everyone always says at the beginning of every month, oh, I can't believe it's September, but October has really hit me. It's really hit me hard because for me, October fully means summer is over. It There is no doubt that we are in autumn. I think because we did have a really lovely September, strangely, we had loads of sunny days. It didn't really feel like autumn, but now that it's October, there's just no denying it. We are fully in the autumn spirit now. Um, so as you just saw, we have got the stove lit. It's feeling very, very cozy in the house. And I'm still in the process of autumnalifying <laughs> various areas of the house. A little bit more of which I'm going to do with you today. It is a gradual process. I don't have like one day where suddenly everything becomes autumnal. Still haven't put that wreath up, but I'm going to do that today. Um, but yes, oh, and also we have got uh, our lovely photographer Kat coming over with Ro with her other half and also her little baby who I've not met before. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is make a pumpkin loaf. I think it's basically a bit like a banana bread, but with pumpkin in it. So that is the plan for this morning. I think I need to find a new place to sit um, to talk to you because when I do my makeup, in this mirror I actually look quite bronzed and these colours look really nice and warm. But in the camera, I think maybe because you're right by the window, the light is just really harsh and it makes me look quite anemic <laughs> is the word. I'm very much enjoying this which is a new eyeshadow palette from NARS from their Climax collection um, and it's got some really beautiful shades. I'm not sure if I'd ever use these two at the bottom but these are some really nice autumnal tones. I just used this middle one which is Private Show which is a very nice if like me you just want a really simple crease crease colour to add a little bit of definition and then it's got this lighter shade which is open wide um, and for me that is just the perfect combination for an everyday autumn eye. And I also have been using for the last three or four days a new Clay de Peau Radiance Cream Foundation. This one here, it's got SPF 25 which is not enough so I am also using my Sarah Chapman Skinesis Factor 50 even though it's autumn. And um, so this was very kindly sent over by Clay de Poe for a, a workshop that we did on Zoom, as well as, why can I not see it? Oh, there it is. Their new powder, which is their Clay de Poe Translucent Loose Powder. And I have never really got in the habit of using powder like this before, but came with this little powder poof, powder poof. So what I'm doing is, I'm actually taking whatever powder is left on the lid, because I don't like too much, and then pressing it onto the areas that I feel like I need powder. And I feel like that gives a really nice kind of airbrush finish. So a couple of little makeup switch ups for autumn. I have also had my hair cut. I went to the Harry's salon on Kings Road and had my hair cut uh, just before James Bond last week this week technically. We're actually going to see James Bond again tomorrow in our local cinema with some friends. We're really excited to see it again. There was a little bit that I didn't fully understand the first time round. Charlie understood it and he did explain it to me but I'm gonna go in again paying, atten paying a bit more attention. But yeah, found my hair much quicker to style um, having with it having been cut. But anyway, before I go down and make this pumpkin banana loaf, which I'm gonna do quite shortly because I also need to make myself some lunch. I'm going to quickly show you a few um, practical bits that are new in my wardrobe for autumn because I have had some lovely deliveries lately. A little disclaimer, I feel like there's probably around this time of year quite a lot of newness coming into my wardrobe and that's just really because of my job showing you new things on YouTube. Retailers, brands often drop me an email and ask if I would like to receive anything from their new collections so that I can show you so that you can see my edits, so that you can see the best bits from a few of my favourite stores and um, yeah so if you're seeing a lot of newness 
It's not a level that you need to keep up with at all. If I wasn't doing this job, I would not have even a fraction of this amount of newness coming in. But I don't say yes willy nilly. I will always choose the bits that I want to share with you. But I hope you find it useful. So these are some really practical bits and I'm not gonna lie, practical bits are more exciting to me these days than um, trend bits. So think autumnal jackets that are gonna keep the wind and rain off, cozy things. So yes, let me do a very quick little try on for you. Just before I get changed, this is literally <laughs> what I'm wearing all day, every day at the moment. Um, especially these cozy days working from home. So it is one of my Karen Millen um, knit dresses. I think this is Karen Millen, pretty sure it is, in this chocolate brown colour and the River Island cardigan. I really hope that you guys have been able to purchase this. I have a feeling it, if not sold out, not very many left of this. It's got cute little pockets which are totally useless for holding anything but great for just putting your hands in your pockets. Um, and if you love dressing gowns and robes and just being super cozy, then this is just fantastic for wearing around the house. So this is what I've been wearing on like a daily basis when working from home. And then I do have two new capes to show you. Cape slash poncho slash um, scarf whatever you want to call them. I think capes are having a bit of a moment at the moment. On the official uh, premiere of James Bond, I noticed that a few of the, the stars were wearing capes. Kate Middleton, well, obviously not like this, but Kate Middleton obviously was wearing that amazing Jenny Packham uh, gold dress, and that had like a cape to it, and a couple of the other attendees of the red carpet celebs that were actresses um, that were in the film, they also wore capes. And capes, I feel like, are quite timeless, very elegant, and always come in every year. So this one is, um, I, I hope I've done that right. So as you saw, I just pulled it through a little hole, and it just makes it very wearable. You don't need to worry about like clutching it in place. This one is 100% cashmere. It's from a brand called Merta, M-I-R-T-A, which you might remember from here we go, from when I told you about this gorgeous bag. Myrta is a really unusual but fantastic idea. It's basically a collective of uh, artisan brands, designers, creators, um, craftsmen in Italy and they they group them all together to give them like the power of numbers. So when it comes to marketing, distribution, um, having great websites, things like that. So they cherry pick the very best, finest craftsmen and their products from Italy and put them all together in one place. So I'll leave Myrtle website down below. Um, but yeah, this is the bag that I showed you before. It is just such high quality, beautiful, timeless design. And then this cape is from another artisan and it's just so elegant i love it so much it's great for i do you know what when we have like christmas drinks with friends autumnal harvest dinner parties things like that if you're going for a pub dinner just what an easy way to make your jumper dress or your outfit look so much more elegant you have seen obviously i got that chloe cape from vista village which i adore um, and this one's a lot easier to throw on, there's nothing to go on over the head. You can of course just wear it loose if you want to, like an open shawl. You could belt it if you wanted to as well, but yeah, I love it and it's so cosy. Being 100% cashmere is just so warm. I also really love the ones which look a little bit like blankets, like a blanket cape. This one is from Phase 8, it's got this giant uh, kind of tartan, I don't know if you'd really even call it tartan because it's just such a wide check but a really really classic, again very timeless one. Phase 8 always have really lovely timeless bits and again just so easy to pop on over your shoulders but if you're looking for these simple things to add into your wardrobe that just make your whole wardrobe seem more chic and just make you look instantly stylish at any age, I would say literally any age I know that my mum loves to wear capes if she's going for lunch with her friends with a crossbody bag or again with a belt cinching you in. I just think that capes, capes over jumper dresses I think is going to be my thing <laughs> this autumn winter so I wanted to show you these two. And the next thing I'm going to try on, I hope these fit me, um, are these. So these are the hot property that is the um, uh, neutral coloured jodhpurs from Lydia's collection with Karen Millen. 
they sold out before I could get my hands on them and one of my followers so kindly messaged me saying do you see that on the website and it was when I was having breakfast with um, Bare Minerals so I didn't have time to get my laptop there and then they sold out she messaged me again said did you get them and I was like no I missed them it turns out that when she received hers and tried them on they didn't fit properly so she very kindly said to me Josie would you like to buy mine off me I was like yes please they are apps so the ones that I have in the chocolate color I got a size 8 these are a size 6 but I'm hoping they're gonna fit my battery's flashing so I'm gonna change that and get changed into these um, and fingers crossed <laughs> they fit Okay, new battery is in. I was just gonna continue showing you the new bits, um, but we've just had someone arrive to the house that Charlie has been organizing. Basically, we have had, um, you are naughty, get back in the kitchen. We have had a little bit of a problem with just so many pigeons here um, <laughs> lately that Charlie wanted to find a solution to. And apparently one of the best things you can do is to bring, okay, bear with me, bring falcons in and they like swoop around they do not i've been promised hurt or kill any pigeons obviously because i would not allow that to happen here but they will swoop around and make it seem that it's their territory which apparently will stop the pigeons coming back it's something that's been recommended to us from a few locals um so the lady with the falcons has just arrived and i thought it'd be really interesting to show you because apparently she's basically got a, a truck full of birds let's go and see i really i don't know what to expect here oh my goodness <gasps> does it go all the way around yeah. so you can go three quarters both ways wow Oh my so goodness. He's a Harris hawk. If you watch him really closely, you can also see his pupils dilating like ours. Because he's seeing all the about. birds. It's look. where he's watching everything. Wow. That's incredible. It's rumoured that they can read a newspaper from two football pictures away. That's how good their eyes are. No oh way. The, the problem is, if they can read, we're a bit screwed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> we don't need to worry about robots taking over the world. We need to worry about falcons taking yes. over the world. Oh my goodness. So, what kind of falcon is he? No, he's no, he's a, a hawk. Harris hawk. A Harris hawk, hawk. Yes. right. So, we okay. have got the falcons in the other. Yes, I've got my little person in the, box. in the other box. So, they, oh I know goodness. it looks a little bit um, scary than being in a box, but apparently, in the darkness, they're much calmer. Okay. Yes. So yeah. they, they rely much, well, especially the hawks and the falcons, they, they have visual stimulants. Mm. So as soon as there's lots of things going on, they get worked up and yeah, stressed. Yeah, it freaks them out. Wow. So then being in complete darkness calms them down and it just sort of makes it easier for them to go around. Otherwise they could have a hood. Yeah. Which yes. Is where you'll see a falcon. Which is a little less, on. I think that's probably a bit, a bit more freaky. Wow. Than it can be. <laughs> oh my goodness. So they swoop around and make it like their territory and then the pigeons think, ah, oh, I won't make this my home. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you want the pigeons to know there's a predator in the area and then to leave that and try and go somewhere else. Wow. And to be clear, obviously pigeons are not the best birds to have in your garden, but it's not really primarily for they're not good for disease. Mm. Obviously they create a lot of mess and they destroy trees, but mm. also for other wildlife, right? For other birds and yes. stuff. They, they are the rats trees. of the sky. So <laughs> they have a place, but they can go and live in woodland or whatever. Or London. Or London. Or London. Or <laughs> we'll send them all back yeah. to London. So this is a really oh humane gosh. way. And obviously there's no pesticides involved, there's no chemicals, there's no killing of any animal, hopefully. No. So even though it might, I'm sure some of your audience might be like, oh, it's unnecessary, let them do their thing, but we've got a lot. This is this is nature's houses, way they? of doing it, but yeah. we're just giving it a little head start. Look at how he's so intrigued. Yeah. How old is Prince Louis? He is five. Yeah, five years old. A squirrel up there. And he's, he's born on my 18th, so I can't quite forget it. Oh, wow. And your other one is Princess Charlotte, did you say? I've got Princess Charlotte, she's at home. She's okay. a bit grumpy at the minute. Oh, right. She's a peregrine season. falcon. No. no, she's another Harris Hawk. Oh, okay. Wow. The one in the box is my peregrine. Right. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. See you, Louis. Oh, bless him. It's this is fruits. incredible. Oh, he likes it in there. He just hops straight in. Yeah. Wow. This is insane, isn't I it? I know. Oh <clears> my <throat> gosh. And do you let them go completely free or do you keep them on a cord when you're sending them out? So for starters, it'll be on a crayon, which is on like a long training line. Yeah. yeah. And then from then, then they'll obviously get the sort of confidence in them that they'll keep coming back. And that's when they go free with a little tra tag on them. Okay. It's like a transmitter. So if they were to go missing, it'd be like a radio beep. Oh, <gasps> my God. Wow. This is my little person. And what's you she, sorry? Are he, is a, he is a peregrine falcon. He's a peregrine falcon. He's about six months at the minute, so he's still sort of quite young, still learning things. That is the most beautiful bird I've ever seen. <laughs> and they and they aren't, you do get these in the, in, in the UK and even around here, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. What an insane experience. Oh. <laughs> There's a weird line where 
sun still comes in despite my blind. Gosh, and I'm literally getting dazzled. It's just one of those things that when you live in London, you just never consider you're going to need pigeon removal services. Obviously, Charlie and I would not be doing this if I thought it was cruel in any way whatsoever. And obviously I wouldn't put it on the internet if I thought we were doing anything that's even slightly not nice for the pigeons, um, but Connie, what an amazing business. She said that she, they have owls that they train to like deliver rings down the aisle at weddings. They do shows, they do obviously what they're doing here. Hopefully, I mean, we're gonna discuss it a little bit more with her, but yeah, apparently it's the most sustainable and natural way of making the pigeons move on and make their home somewhere else. So she has to come three times a week for the next three weeks um, and then they come and like do it again every now and then to make the pigeons move somewhere else. So yes, well I just grabbed this jacket um, to wear outside because although the sun is now shining, it was pouring with rain about 20 seconds ago. Um, and this is another new bit that I wanted to show you from, ooh, <laughs> That's some from Jules, and it's a little bit, um, and it's very typical, like countryside style that I love. You've got these two um, pockets here. Do kind of wish it was a little bit more cinched in. I think I've got a size six, but then to be honest, for the rest of the year, I'm probably going to wear this with chunkier knits. Love the color. It's a very kind of heritage um, color. I really like this collar detail, quilting style really lovely. This is a jacket that I'm going to leave on the back of the kitchen door for those times when I just need to dash out into the garden and it's got this gorgeous floral lining and a little gold hook, just a really nice, because obviously at the moment, not obviously, obvious to me, but at the moment I've just got my really old M&S um, quilted jacket in pink. It is looking a bit tired, um, so this is a really nice upgrade for something that I do wear really, really often. Oh, I could probably cinch it in with these little buttons at the back. Yeah, I can definitely make it a little bit more fitted by pulling that in. Oh, that has actually made quite a bit of difference. It's a slightly more um, hourglass shape now. Lovely, perfect jacket for a countryside gal. Okay, this feels like a festive outfit and I'm very much okay with that. I feel like now we're in October, festive stuff is okay which I hope you're okay with because I'm gonna do a little bit of a Christmas decoration unboxing in a second. Um, but here we have a gorgeous, right, I need to learn the difference between Fair Isle, Cable Knit, Aran, because you guys keep telling me off for getting it wrong, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it. I think this is Fair Isle. Yes, this is definitely Fair Isle. Okay, so it's when it's, um, it's when it's kind of a little bit more colourful, this kind of almost Swedish. Yeah, you guys are right, you know. Aran knitwear is a style of jumper that takes its name from the Aran Islands off the west coast of Ireland. A traditional Aran jumper is off-white in colour with cable, cable patterns. See, I was right. Sorry, this light is really annoying. I was right in that it is a cable because it literally looks like a cable and I look like Harry, po <laughs> Harry Potter. Um, but yes, you're right. So when it's like a creamy color with that cable pattern on the body and sleeves, then it's an Aran style jumper and cable knit is obviously. Um, so I guess, yeah, this would be Aran because it is creamy off-white in color and it's got the cable pattern. Whereas maybe because this is well, I guess this is still creamy. I'm gonna to struggle to find anything that's not creamy in my wardrobe, um, but still got that cable pattern. But yeah, probably still an Aran style jumper. So I've educated myself, I hope you guys are happy now. And then I have got on the leggings from Karen Millen, Lydia's collection, and they fit perfectly. I think I might, if the chocolate ones come back in stock, also get them in a six. This is the kind of trouser that I wear so much. Um, my Regular subscribers will know that my my one true love in my wardrobe are my Reese Tyne leggings and um, I've been hinting at Reese for many years to bring them out in a creamy oatmeal colour. They are yet to do that. I've got them in like a pinky shade and like an olivey shade, both of which I adore, but I've wanted them in this colour, this colour here for so long. So Lydia, thank you for doing them um, in your Karen Millen collection. And this is this is pretty much my winter uniform. I find trousers like this so comfortable and easy to wear. Um, they're so high waisted that where I don't like to have things tight on my tummy, it's fine because they actually finish higher. They finish in the smallest section 
oh for me like this is my narrowest part um literally my waist not even a centimeter below it's literally on my waist so yeah i think very flattering and very comfortable so this is a superb outfit very very happy with this if you want to get full on winter mode that light is so annoying <laughs> the sun is just in the wrong place for my blinds if you want to get full on winter mode fairfax um not fairfax holland cooper Oh my gosh, that is literally the perfect bobble hat. They very kindly sent over this little bobble hat as well. I love it, and then I don't think I'd wear them together because this coat, um, for me, I would normally style it with more like a fedora hat. I've got a couple of felt fedoras from Holland Cooper from last autumn winter. I'm hoping this is gonna be my like regular autumn winter coat that I will pop on for literally everything. Like if I need to, nip out and do some shopping or if I've got oh gosh it's quite big it's very big actually um but then again I will most probably be wearing oh gosh oh I don't know if it's too big it does kind of feel like I have stolen um my husband's jacket or even my dad's what do we think does this just look far too ginormous I I love it so much and like all the details are amazing it's like this buckle the fabric is obviously amazing very very countryside style which I adore you've got these little buttons I think maybe because it's like a wide lapel um, and then you've got the zip when it's open it feels really big but I think maybe it's just a bit too big for me on the shoulders but also this is gonna be so warm because it's really like padded I absolutely adore it I do I I wonder if there's anything I could do to this tailoring wise to make it fit me a little bit better because it's just such a gorgeous coat but where I'm quite petite in my framing I don't know if it's just a little bit too big. I'm going to take it to a tailor um, and see what they can suggest because I think this is the smallest size that Holland Cooper do. Yeah this is size 6. Oh, I am determined to make this work so fingers crossed we can tailor it. So those are the new kind of practical autumnal bits in my wardrobe. I'm gonna keep these leggings on, I'm gonna pop on a jumper that's a little bit less festive, and then let's go and make my banana loaf. Well, hello again, darlings. It's a few hours later, and I can't remember what I promised you that I was gonna show you next, probably making a pumpkin pie, but as always happens in life, gonna I was going to make a pumpkin loaf, um, oh, but time just ran away and Kat, her other half Roland and little baby Wolfie have arrived with us and so we have been taking just a few photos, um, just getting some nice autumn in the sunshine pictures and now we are in convoy, Kat and Roland are behind us, we are heading over to Strawtop Cottage. Uh, they are staying here for a lovely autumnal Cotswold weekend, which is really, really nice. And then I think we are going to go over to the farmhouse for dinner. So that is the plan for the rest of the evening. I've not been to the cottage in a few days, but Charlie has been overseeing a few finishing touches. What has gone on in the cottage since I've last been there, darling? Well, we had a photo shoot. Yes. Um, but as part of pre the photo shoot, I just did all the last finishing touches, whether that's... I bought four or five... Um, you know, like countryside magazines, Lovely. you know, like, like nice little final touches. I bought some fresh um, hydrangeas from Soho Farmhouse and then obviously the plan is to dry them out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just small finishing touches. Put some also, pictures up on the wall. I think this is also going to be a good example of what guests should expect in terms of what we, little, little personal touches. Yeah. You know, obviously there are elements, we're, we're building the website out and there are going to be options to add add to what's there when you arrive from um you know if you, if you want us to get like a, a hamper of things together mm. we're not quite there yet with that but there are obviously a few things that we are planning on you know always putting in there for guests whether that be a fresh loaf of bread um or a, i always call it a punnet of eggs but it's not a punnet of eggs is it what would you call um, it a box of eggs yeah i like carton, punnet but carton. i think carton, 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 carton. i think so yeah maybe carton of eggs yeah i'd like punnet though but um Planet of strawberries, isn't it? Yeah. So um, yeah. So so that's it, really. I think, and it's um, it's finally feeling sort of 
done. complete. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think. I think our plan is that as we explore antique markets and things, we will add the odd thing. I'm sure that's what most people do when they've got rental cottages. Mm. But for now, it, it is it is 99.9. Wow. That ivy is that ivy or is that a vine? Did you I'm see not, that? Yeah. I'm not quite that's sure. That's amazing. I think that's the one um, major difference between renovating the holiday cottage and renovating our house. Obviously, when it's your own home, you've got all the time in the world, and you can just keep. Ooh. I always get really scared of that buttress. That was, that was, that is now. Tight, yeah. Um, you can just take your time and you can add to things over time. But when you have the deadline of obviously needing to make money because you have to have guests in, you have to give yourself a real deadline and you have to get everything done in one go. Um, which is probably why we have been a little bit slower launching it. But anyway, we have arrived in the beautiful village of Adderbury. The cottage is glowing in the golden hour evening sun. I'm excited to see, um, Cat's verdict. One thing that Charlie is very good at is finishing touches. And so we've, he's added in some dried hydrangeas on the table here. And I've spotted that he's brought in some nice little blooms. What are these, darling? Are they sedums? They, that is a viburnum. Viburnum? So viburnums are really nice this time of year because they're evergreen anyway. Oh, they, are they flower in the autumn. Lovely. Oh, it's so cozy. Like <laughs> You're like the porter today, taking all the stuff up. <laughs> this corner is looking really lovely. Charlie's added, um, so we actually got this container from an antique centre. He's added some more hydrangeas in there, which looks really lovely. And then we've got a couple of the bedside books. When we have friends staying, we always give them goodie bags. So Kat and Roland have got some little goodies. We've got the Soho House robes. Some nice magazines on the dressing table. Excuse the post photo shoot piles of clothing on our chaise longue in the bedroom, but Charlie is lighting the fire. This is the first time that our bedroom fire has been lit in 2021, do you think? Not in 2021. No, I think we did a few in like January, February, oh, didn't gosh, we? No, I think, if anything, I think we did more in 2021 beginning than we did the end. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. But anyway, you're right. It's the first time we'll have done one probably since about April time, March time. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, uh, you know, we're very lucky that it is quite a warm house anyway when you consider it so old. Yeah. And we've got underfloor heating. So really, it tends to be more just because... <laughs> what are you wow, picking up? There's plaster falling off somewhere. Yeah. We have all kinds of things falling out of our ceiling yeah, in this yeah. in this house. Oh, don't pick it. Oh. Get this bad boy literally. Yep. This is the most satisfying sound in the world. Something about matches that's just so much nicer than using a lighter. Absolutely. I actually can't use lighters, they really hurt my hand. Because <laughs> you know when they have that scratchy bit that you have to flick oh, down? Oh, good diddums. <laughs> This is Charlie's um, do you know what we're gonna do, though? infamous Jenga stacking. If you ever stay at Straw Top Cottage, this is what you need to do. We're going to film a reel, how to light a fire properly. The thing is, there is a way, which is what the Charmwood guys do, where they do the stack on top of this. Oh, right. Lights them. That does I make sense. I the shape of the fire when you do it this way, and then I'll add these either side when this gets a bit more hot, because I prefer how it looks. Mm. The way the Charmwood guys do it, it doesn't look great to start with and then obviously you can build the fire at a later date to the shape you want but mm. I think you get it right this. Yes, so this is the first time. We need to get a nice, um, I was thinking we should use one of those comfort jars for these flowers. Yeah, we should. In fact, should we move them away in case they start to shrivel up? No, no, they're fine. Really? Yeah, they've always lived there. They've always been there. Hmm. I think they're totally fine. I don't know. I don't want them to shrivel up. Well, the fire is lit. I'm going to take my yeah. makeup off. The apocalypse shutters are getting shut. Oh, look at that. And we'll see you in the morning. Night night. <laughs> oh, 
Good morning, my darlings. It is now the next day. Uh, it is, I was about to say Sunday, it feels like Sunday. It is Saturday morning. I've just done a 30 minute Peloton, which was great. I've not done one in a little while, so that felt good to get back on it. Um, and it's a miserable day, but it's fine because Charlie and I are heading to the cinema with our friends Rory and Nathan. We are going to see Bond again. We actually had this booked before we received the invitation to the screening on opening night in London. London. Um, but yes, very much looking forward to seeing it again and also really looking forward to seeing our local cinema because um, it's an everyman cinema and they are, they're really nice ones. We had one in Clapham. Um, sorry, no, that was a picture house. There was one, do you know what? Actually, all previous Bond films we've seen in the cinema with um, Charlie's family have been at the Everyman Cinema, I think in Walton-on-Thames. And they're really nice <laughs> cinemas. Obviously, since we've moved to this area, they've all been shut. So we've not been able to go to see a film properly in like two years. So this is our first time to our local cinema. So looking forward to that. And of course, catching up with the boys. Um, you may have noticed something is sparkling behind me. I did a big unboxing yesterday of um, Christmas bits. You may have seen that Cox and Cox were doing um, quite a bit of promotion around 100 days to Christmas, and I just could not resist picking out a few lovely pieces from there. So let me show you. Well, aren't they just magical? We have two illuminated reindeers, and I have actually always wanted um, some sparkly light up reindeers, but obviously in Clapham it just would have been a little bit ridiculous. You can almost guarantee that they would have got stolen if we put these outside our house in Clapham, even though we did live in a lovely gated muse. Um, I mean, if anyone really wanted to steal something from in there, they could have jumped the gate. <laughs> so we just never would have risked using, um, putting something like this out. And then last year, obviously, we weren't really allowed to see anyone over Christmas because of lockdown. So it's fair to say that we're going to be going pretty big for Christmas this year. I just love these two. I think they'll look really nice um, outside the house. They look lovely here. I just set them up so that you can see them um, and place an order now potentially because I think lovely, like really lovely things like this do tend to sell out as people start to do their decorating. And I think, I think I'm not alone in going big for Christmas this year. So I'll leave everything that I've got here linked down below. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably put these, and I have actually ordered one more, and a, a bigger one that's more like a stag. I think it's bigger. It could end up being the same size as this one. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have them out on the front there. And then also some really, really gorgeous baubles. Now, I did struggle last year. I did have to buy a lot of baubles last year, um, because we had more, more trees to fill. And I struggled to find good quality ones that didn't look really tacky, but I think these are lovely. Very, very fragile. I think it's actually plastic as opposed to glass, which I'm very happy about because not only does that make them a bit more affordable, um, but also, yeah, I've just noticed on the thingy here, it does say shatterproof. Little shards of thin bauble glass is not what you want, especially going down between our floorboards. Um, and then over here, just a little selection of other little baubles, which I think are really lovely. So just some very traditional, I think this house, we can really only do traditional kind of decorations. These are just lovely antique looking glass baubles with like a little bit of floral detail. These could almost pass as window tassels, but I just thought they were gorgeous. Very, again, very traditional. Cox and Cox do like themes for their Christmas decorations. So I think they've got a, a kind of Scandi theme. They've got um, a pink theme, which is absolutely gorgeous. But I chose from their more traditional, I think, I think it was literally called the traditional theme. So loads of those, lots more in the boxes here. So yes, I thought I would show you those before we store them back away. Uh, it's only going to be a month or so until I want to get them out again now that we're in October. How crazy is that? I'm probably going to start decorating fairly early November. So yeah, we'll probably see these guys again in about six weeks. Um, I did also upstairs just do a little bit of jewellery unboxing. Let's see if I can focus. And uh, I've gone a little bit crazy with my rings. So the three on the middle finger, the lower three, I did always have on, but I've just added 
this top ring and these two i always think showing rings on my hands is really unflattering um but yeah they the new ones are all from astrid and mew and the bottom three are the ones that i always wear from majuri and then on this hand i don't really have a problem with being completely covered in rings i like to have pirate hands gosh my hands are really unphotogenic but i have to say in real life i think I think my hands are fine, but they always look so pale and pink and veiny on camera. Um, this one with the pearl, and then this top one above my Missima ring. Just a really nice new little cluster. So we're just waiting for Rory and Nathan at Everyman Cinemas. It's a really nice space. Um, you get seat service. So we can get pizza, we can get sharing plates, chorizo, guacamole, burgers. You can literally have a full dinner at your seat while you're watching the film. Epic. I think I just did. But I look good in this shot. Uh, You're welcome. To be fair, they, they've done a good job. Thank you. Look at that. It's amazing. Where are you going to put it? Um, I think it's kind of annoying they don't give you a table like that, isn't yeah. it? I think you should. <laughs> So after the cinema, Charlie has found a place called Bobby's. We're actually on like an old train carriage. Camera does not like the slow lighting. You don't really want the bread. And it's basically lots of little tapas. We've ordered everything on the menu except for the prawns. We've got some breaded mozzarella, some croquettes, salumi fries. Looks good. Good morning, my darlings. It is now Sunday morning. Oh my goodness, last night, James Bond just as good the second time round. I, I thought maybe I would get a little bit bored considering I'd seen it only a few days ago, but honestly, it's just one of those films that there's so much going on and I noticed, I noticed even more the second time round. I honestly could watch it again. <laughs> it was that good. Um, and then Charlie had heard about this place called Bobby's and it's I don't think it's a pop-up, I think it's always going to be there. A restaurant on an old train carriage in Stratford-upon-Avon serving, I think they called it British tapas. So I showed a few clips, we had pulled pork croquetas, deep fried mozzarella, halloumi fries, uh, truffle chips. The boys had uh, lots of squid and lots and lots of lovely things, so a fantastic evening. Today I'm in a very cosy Sunday outfit, my Holland Cooper jumper um, that I had, was it last winter or the winter before? I don't know, super cosy because today we are heading back to my old neck of the woods, the area that I grew up in, and we're going to be going to a trial. Now a trial um, in this respect is where, it's like, it's a, it's really hard to describe, it's a motorsport trial, so people will do up these cars, you'll see shortly, um, and it's like a time trial in a field. Basically, this is something that my dad was very, very into, um, so I grew up going along to these trials. My dad passed away when I was 13, um, and this trial was really like his his baby, and now the trial is actually named after him, and the trial is happening today, it's called the Pete Fear Pinford Trial, so we're heading there today to support, and also to give <laughs> my brother the Mazda, so I'm going to be driving the Mazda with the dogs in the back, and Charlie's going to drive the Defender, we're going to take the Mazda over to um, where my brother lives, I'm very sad to be saying goodbye to it, but also I'm just so much happier that it's staying within the family and I'll still get to see it than selling it because obviously the selling the second hand car market right now is insane, but honestly I you guys must be rolling your eyes with the amount that I rave about this master and thinking, Josie, why are you getting rid of it then? But yeah, I'm just really glad that my brother's gonna be able to use it. As I mentioned previously, he's got four little boys, um, so it's going to be great for him. It's really annoying me that the basket lid isn't on properly on our towel basket. But that's the plan for today. Charlie is making breakfast as we speak, and then it's time to hit the road for my last ever journey in the Mazda. <laughs>
Well, this is it. We have arrived in Rosong Wai at the designated point where we are leaving the car for my brother to pick up. So this is it. My final journey in the Mazda is complete. See you later, Mazda. Bye, Mazda. You have Quite been wonderful. Sad, <laughs> I feel almost as emotional now as I did when we left Mandeville. Well, it's the end I'm not of the very era. good at change. It is the end, end of an of era. era. Mazda, oh, I could cry. <laughs> You've been a wonderful well, car we're for us. We're going to see the Mazda a lot when your brother visits us. Yes. So it's not like Mandeville. That's true. It's true. Mazda, you've been a wonderful car. You will always have a special place in my heart. <laughs> but for now, it's windows up and engine off. <laughs> Honestly, why am I like this? Okay. <sighs> Time to say goodbye. My old village. Where, am I going to? Uh, where are we going, Lilla? Yep. Right, right. Straight on round? No, 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 dog leg. Where are all these cars are coming from? Left. Oh, right. Straight oh, on. Right, Lilla. Right, right, right. Okay. The house that I grew up in was down there. Mm. This was my local bus stop. <laughs> Aww. I haven't been back here in like, God, it must be like five years. No, I think it's three years, probably. Really? Two, and a, two and a bit years, yeah. It'll be two and a bit, won't it? Because it was the Christmas just before COVID. So it was December 2020 that we came. No, December 2019. To Ross and Y, but when did we last come to Upton Bishop? December 2019. Oh, to Upton Bishop, that's a good point. Yeah, that's what I mean. Upton Bishop, it must have been five years. Could be right. shot those last few clips on my phone but it's been a lovely a lovely sunny day uh, we saw quite a few hills in action good job we've got the defender 4x4 motors yeah, on I need to take it slow now. <laughs> you open for it you open for a tip so it may not be a looker from this side but this is a pub called the Roadmaker Inn and we used to come here all the time when I lived in this area it's run by it's a very traditional English looking pub red carpets and an old-fashioned bar but it's run by Nepalese Gurkhas so it is the most delicious Gurkha food because everybody's coming at one yeah uh-huh well that was an epic fail Ooh. 
That was a bit of an epic fail because apparently they only serve Sunday roasts on Sunday. And uh, we were, Sunday no, we didn't know they did Sunday roasts. And Charlie spotted um, an Aunt Bessie's sack of potatoes. <laughs> 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 Maybe so. Maybe so, like the food snob, but they're, they're Sunday roasts, so I don't think are there. For them. <laughs> No, I think they're much better at curries. So we have decided to come to the pub in my old village, Moody Cow. Let's see if there's any room at the inn. It's a good one though, so hopefully they might find a table for us. No, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, that's Thank perfect. You. Thank you so much. Well, you don't have any apple Hello, darlings. We are back home again. I'm looking a little bit um, bleary-eyed because I definitely fell asleep in the car on the way home. Um, we popped into a place called Portobello Farm Market. I think that's what it's called on the way back. And they had a really nice selection of little homey bits and bobs, um, lots of faux flowers. Charlie picked up a very expensive wooden chopping board and some other nice little bits and bobs. Gosh, my makeup has smudged all over my face. Probably should have sorted that out before vlogging. But now we're back home, I'm doing a little bit of my Sunday afternoon flower maintenance. I have just been out in the garden and picked some anemones from the um, from the border out there for this little vase. I pick the, oh, oh my gosh, it's five o'clock already. That alarm goes off when I need to publish a YouTube video so that I don't forget. I'll get that ready to click publish in three minutes. Yeah, I picked the cow, I think it's cow parsley um, flower about 10 days ago. That lasts really well in water and I like to mix it with anemones and cosmos. Sadly, the anemones and cosmos don't last quite as long, but I think it's a really nice, very wiry um, collection to have on the kitchen table. I've had that this kind of collection for the past maybe six weeks or so. I've also just changed the water on these and these. I don't think these will last that long. Such a lovely bouquet. How nice is this card from our friends Chloe and Tom from their wedding? And these are probably in their third week. These are the remnants of a Freddy's flowers bouquet. Sedums and the purple ones that I can never remember the name of and they last really well. Um, and then we are all out of fresh flowers in here. We've got the little fern item over there, some dried hydrangeas. And then I also just did my drying out maintenance on these hydrangeas. So I mentioned in a video a little while ago that uh, dark colored hydrangeas tend to dry out better than light colored ones. So these hopefully should be perfect. My top tip is to just put a little bit of water in the bottom of the vase when you first get them home and let them drink that up all naturally. Uh, and then maybe a week or so late later, just check that all the water is gone. Take off all the leaves. So make sure there are no leaves on the stems of the hydrangea. If you want to, you can hang them upside down, but I like to literally just leave them in place and forget about them. And they do tend to dry out really nicely, especially if they're dark. Right, I've been filming for three minutes, so that means... There we go. Public. And save. There we go, that video is now live. And I've popped the hydrangeas back in the centre of my lovely little harvest table. Um, I picked these up from Portobello, Portobello Farm. They're just quite a good size, three for 15 pounds, which I know is very expensive for little plant pots, but these do last forever and it's really nice to just grab some when you find them. This was my best purchase, the 20 that I got from, what's it called, Station Mill. Um, somebody's not allowed out here, are they? Come on. Should we go and sit in the lounge? Should we go and watch some James Bond? Come on then, sausage. I'm back to a place 